Okay, another day, another dollar. Today we are playing probably the hardest Hearthstone deck in the entire game to play. Dark Sour Warlock. Um, this is a deck a lot of you guys in uh, the wild community think is really easy and straightforward to play. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, you are dumb as fuck if you think this deck is simple. Big Priest, that was easy. All you had to do was have Barnes on turn 4. When you play Darkest Hour Warlock, you need to have a lot of cards by turn 4 or 5 to be a good player. And this deck, specifically, on turn 4, you have to win the coin flip to get a coin. Then you have to have Reform Scheme in your hand. You also have to have a Blood Bloom and a Dark Star. And then you combo. It is truly skill-intensive Hearthstone. This is a deck that really just tests whether or not you're good enough to have 3 cards in your hand at a very specific time or not. And if you're not... Well, then you fucking suck. But if you're good, then you don't suck and you win. Now, the developers have decided that this deck is too too overpowered, too strong. And you know what? I understand. It is probably the hardest and most rewarding deck to play in the game right now. So they're nerfing Bloodloom to 4 mana. Yep. Developers are scared. It's true. Well, uh, so I'm going to think about that for a second. So we're playing a, a deck that focuses on getting to like turn 5 or 6 and having uh, cards that generate a bunch of tokens in the form of spells, like Phoenix Circle or Reform Scheme, right? So we get Phoenix Circle or Reform Scheme and then we play Blood Bloom and Dark Sour on turn 5 or 6 and we pull a bunch of 10 drops. Any between like 8 and 10 sound-wise. So we want to play Zephyrus in a deck like that, right? Definitely makes sense, right? Like, we're all in on some three-card combo that makes us pull a bunch of random shit from our deck, and we want one of those cards to be Zephyrs. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know what? Honestly, Yes, Raj, Colossus of the Moon, those cards suck. Cut them, put in Zephyrs. That's the one you want to be pulling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we'll just we'll change this game to be like Runeterra, where it'll be like a play effect instead of a battle cry. And then, or like, I guess a summon effect. And then we'll get the summon effect on Zephyrus, and we'll get to discover the perfect card in the given situation. But yeah, we just have to change it to a summon effect from a battle cry, add a new keyword into the game, and, um, you know, remove a couple of the two of us we have in the deck, and then boom, Zephyrus is perfect. Yeah, definitely. 100% the move. So I really appreciate chat, because a lot of time, I just won't be smart enough to come up with these ideas, right? I mean, obviously, I'm really good in playing a you know a skill intensive deck that requires a lot of uh, just precise uh, decisions, and um, you know it's not easy to do. But Chad, you guys can help out a lot, which is great because I mean, my brain is small, just just big enough to play the deck, right? But with you guys, you can help me perfect the deck building portion Hello. Of, uh, of playing the game. Hello, my friend. Yes, I hope you had a great turn one, dude. Welcome to the fucking stream, your opponent. I uh, hope you're having a great day. Glad you turned it on to see what I'm doing. Welcome to the broadcast, dipshit. Nice fire blast. Great. Hit the top button. You see? And again, we're going with the handicap where we draw the 9 and 10 drops early game. It's just it's just what we have to do if we want to give our opponents a fair game. Because otherwise, we're just going to be winning every single time. And I think that winning every single time is kind of cool, but I'm not going to lie, it gets kind of fucking boring pretty fast. I'd love to lie to you guys and tell you it's so much fun for so long, but, you know, eventually winning all the time gets boring. So you got to mix it up a little bit in limit test. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of limit testing, honestly. I think if somebody tells you there is, they need to get checked out. We attacked in the correct order for Flame Ward. And that's a next level player play. Not too many people are going to realize you should be doing that. But if you're a very smart gamer like myself, you'll realize that you do need to attack first with your highest attack minion into Flame Ward. Obviously, it was Ice Beard, but if it was Flame Ward, we got an extra damage in. Very, very smart. This guy is afraid. Imagine being that scared of Plague of Flames, dude. Actually, such a pussy. 
<sighs> so terrified. It's okay, I understand. I understand. Nego face. Thank you. All of his spells are expensive now. You see this little coin he said in his hand that he's never played all game? It'll literally cost him mana to coin now. Oh, fucking played. Seriously, it's kind of gross. Ready for a show? What about Vaporize? Nope, doesn't exist. Broken game interaction, what the fuck? R says spells cost you more, why does it override it? Unlucky. The game is literally imbalanced and trying to give these bad players a way to win. Disgusting. This guy is literally cheating and using fake game mechanics. I have a card that literally says spells cost two more. Okay, so we're starting at zero, right? So what is zero plus two more? It's two. Yeah. And this guy used a one mana, or he used a spell for zero mana still. We are playing against people who are legitimately cheating at the fucking game. And we're still winning. Yeah. Legitimately using fucking cheats. It's not even a joke, guys. Not even a joke. It's kind of gross. Absolutely fucking disgusting. Like, yes, I have drawn uh, all of my 9 drops and all of my 10 drops before I get to do a combo. Yes, I know. And this guy's cheating. But that's okay, we're still probably gonna win. This guy plays stupid dragons. Imagine that. He's picking a spell and I have a card that makes spells cost more. So stupid, dude. Actually, so dumb. Holy, I thought he was gonna make a big brain play. I was kind of excited because I thought he was gonna do some like super five head play where he makes my uh, my Melganis not come. But then I realized he's not good enough to do that. So yeah, we got the Melganis out still because we're great at the game. The opponent unfortunately just isn't. That's the way it goes. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, let's show him a little bit of respect. He doesn't deserve it, but I I'm kind of game to show him a little bit of respect here. Just a tiny bit. You know what? I'm not even going to do it for free. I'll spend mana on it. I'm honestly fine with that. I could get it for free, but you know what? Honestly, I'll show this guy a tiny bit of respect and just play for free for fun. It's like, why not, right? That's a lot of taunts. Holy shit. What is he protecting now? Like, why even bother at this point with all the taunts? Nobody cares about them. Migo face. Sorry, I, I had to take a second to think there. Again, like I said, this is a very, very skill intensive deck and one that there are really just so many different decisions to make that you can mess up at any point. So sometimes it's good to just slow down and think about what you want to do. In my case, I didn't want to play Dark Sour because I'm the unluckiest player on the fucking planet and I drew all of my 9 drops and 10 drops already this game. So the value of Dark Sour went down a little bit because instead of cheating, 50 mana into play, I'd only cheat like 30. And I mean, if the number you're cheating for is less than 40, not very good. It's kind of bad. Hmm. Watch out for the amazing Reno guy. Don't worry, I've already got you covered. I make his coins cost more mana because I play a Nurbian Unraveler. And then... I don't let him coin the amazing Reno Jackson because his coin costs him two mana to get one. Which means you're paying one mana for a coin. So stupid. He's five mana to draw two. Imagine a world where you're that stupid. You spend five mana to draw two. Actually, so dumb. And I didn't even need to do the combo. You know, this guy just gets everything thrown at him. Literally uses cheats with Dragon Caster to win. And we still get there because you know what? We're just the best. That's about it. 
Outplayed, outskilled, out everything. Best players in the fucking world right now. Actually insane. Let's go to the best subreddit in the entire world. Balance patch. Kale fast, cost 7. So that means the druid deck's gonna do less dumb stuff. But, does it really matter? Not really, no, because the effect wasn't changed. Literally doesn't do anything at all. Albatross goes from 3 mana to 4 mana. Does it matter? Yes. Why does it matter? Because all of the odd dumbasses can't play it now. Some of the even dumbasses can choose to use it now, like the shaman guys if they want to. That being said, they probably don't want to. Also, it's more expensive for the cube idiots to play. Kind of a big deal. Big buff to the Reno decks. Frenzied Fellwing, 3-3 three, three, to a 3-2. Three, oh my god, a turbo nerf. Wow. Unplayable. Can't play with it anymore. Boom. Altruist the Outcast, 3 mana 3-2 three, to 4 mana 4-2. Really fair nerf. This card was turbo broken. Not much to say about that. But you can't use it in the odd deck now, which is a pretty big fucking nerf. Battle Fiend, 1 mana 2-2 two, two, to 1 mana 1-2. Also, a turbo nerf. Turns out, on one drops, removing one point of sucking stats actually is super significant. Yeah, kind of a big deal. Turbo fucking nerfed. Gladebound Adept, 7-4 to 6-4. Basically changes nothing. 6 and 7 are still obscene amounts of attack. Boom. Holy. Sacrificial pack got changed. Destroy a friendly demon. Wait. Does that mean? No fucking way. Is he coming out? I've opened like three golden Lord Jaraxxuses. Is he now playable? No fucking way. Is he playable, guys? No fucking way. Blood Bloom. Costs two mana to four. Wow. Not like that wasn't the nerf that everybody predicted. Crazy. Absolutely kills my favorite deck and the best deck in the game. I can't believe they let Odd Paladin be a deck while they are nerfing, you know, crazy skill intensive decks like the one I'm playing right now. Makes no sense. Liberum of Justice. What the fuck is Liberum of Justice? I actually don't even know what that card is. It's the equality card. Okay. The one for weapon equality. Yeah, could maybe use a buff. Yeah, just a little bit. Maybe. Okay. Uh, and... Open the way gate. Cast six spells that didn't start in your deck. Reward time warp. New. Cast eight spells that didn't start in your deck. Reward time warp. Huh. It's almost like six versus eight doesn't even matter and that's still really easy to do. Crazy. Insane. Huh. Well, they'll kill you one turn slower now, guys. One turn slower. So be, be on the watch for that. And you know, with the, um, the Albatross nerf, maybe we'll see some more people playing the Reno version of this deck instead of the, the super fast Flame Waker version. Crazy. So, basically nothing changes here. Um, you're still going to be seeing a lot of uh, quest mages. For sure. Yeah. A full dust refund. Wow. Oh. I have a golden open the way gate. I get dust for that. Holy. No way. How many blood blooms do I have? Yeah. Only two. Fuck. Unlucky. But that's okay. Boom. Battlegrounds changes. Oh, they nerf Millhouse. Tavern Tears cost one more. Millhouse nerf for Battlegrounds. Woohoo! Yippee! That's insane. They let you get 500 wins with Demon Hunter now. Crazy. Imagine having 500 wins with Demon Hunter already. Holy fuck. I'm going to do some math for you, okay? So you pull up the calculator, right? So... Think about it this way, right? You have 10 mana. You want to play an Albatross. Before you use 3 mana. So you have 7 mana left over. 7's a lot of mana. But now if you have 10 mana and you want to play an Albatross, you use 4 mana. So you only have 6 mana left over. That's not a lot compared to 7. 7 is more than 6. It's kind of nuts. Keep the reform scheme because if I draw Blood Bloom in a Darkest Hour, well... We're going to be having a great time. Oh, the Darkest Hour. Can we get a Blood Bloom for turn 4 combo? Would be insane. Absolutely nuts. 
Turn two Zephyrs. Wow. Crazy. Okay, we want to tap and hit a Blood Bloom. Can I get a Blood Bloom? Willing to trade seven pesos for a Blood Bloom. That is not a Blood Bloom. That is a Dark Sour, not a Blood Bloom. I've done the math, I've checked, and yeah. It is not a Blood Bloom. I repeat, not a Blood Bloom. I think the game is bugged. All of my opponents will always have this combo on turn 4, so I don't know why I'm not able to have the combo. Feels like I'm kind of being discriminated against right now. I'm also drawing my 10 drops again. Guys, what's happening? Do you think that I maybe picked up pissed off Mike Denias? We maybe we maybe pissed off the game developers, guys. We maybe did it. But okay, that's fine. We did it. We played the cards. Insane. How dead is our Melganis? Let's see. I feel like he is very Rippo and hippo right now. A Doomsayer? And a Freeze effect? No, a Clear effect. Insane. Okay, gentlemen, what are we gonna do? I guess we're gonna have to play a Sinister Deal and take the Faceless Lackey and play a Skull and then go face. How tragic. Absolutely unfortunate. Light Oracle. Why are you? Why is? Don't draw me my cards. I don't want my cards. Why are you doing that? What the fuck? Why am I drawing all the ten drops again? Fuck this game. Literally imbalanced game. Game designers need to look at this and tell me if this is an an error or not. Actually can't be how the game is supposed to be played. I've been playing Hearthstone for longer than I've been able to tie my shoes. And I can tell you that this game is sort of fucked up because, well, you're not supposed to draw all of your 10 drops when you play the Dark Sour deck because then you don't pull 10 drops from your deck. But we drew both the 10 drops. And now he has a Flame Ward, which makes me sad. It makes me very sad, actually. You might ask why it makes me sad. I probably should have tapped there. It makes me sad because I have to pay mana to get my 10 drops. I, I know that maybe sounds normal to some of you guys, but to me, that's kind of fucked up. I don't want to have to actually spend 10 mana to play a 10 drop. I want to spend 0 mana to play a 10 drop. I want to blood bloom and take 6 damage and get a 10 drop for free from my deck. And that's unfortunately just not the situation we're in right now, which kind of pisses me off. And I think being angry is kind of justified here, to be honest. I really do. Fuck Counterspell. Fuck Counterspell. Yeah, broken spell, guys. Broken spell. I think he's going to play Reno Jackson and win the game. That's my hot take. Blood for blood. Any takers? He did it. Wow. Look at this guy. Actually on top of the world right now. Insane.
He can actually afford a Reno Jackson. I am fucking jealous. Okay. He can afford a Reno Jackson, but... Can he afford a second Reno Jackson? I think no. He spent five mana to draw two cards. No, he can't. Okay. Yep, this guy cheats. You know, he gets a double, uh, double Thoris and Tick. He still can't even win. I actually play my 10 drops from my hand. And we still just win. He even cheated and discovered a counterspell, dude. Literally unstoppable. Most skilled player always wins? Yeah, I mean, it's fucking Hearthstone, not chess. Not some stupid RNG game, right? The better player literally always wins in Hearthstone. It's not some dumb kids game like chess or anything like that. Like, I, I heard the Magnus Carlson guy lost to some teenager. How can the best player in the world lose to a teenager? The best Hearthstone player in the world would never lose to a teenager, ever. Never, ever. We're gonna win again, and we drew the 10 drop again. I don't know how I keep on doing it, but... You know. We're popping off. Making kids concede in his Velcro shoes. True! Thank you so much for the 10 spicy meat sauce. Appreciate it. Hope you have a good night. Why are we drawing every E drop in the deck? Is this game really that worried about us popping off here? I'm not gonna lie, I would probably be pretty nervous too. Because we're kind of popping the fuck off. But... The game is maybe trolling us a little bit too much. Okay, well we have the combo now, so never mind. Except for he can play Psychic Scream, but that's never gonna happen, right? Because we're gonna get a Nervian and Raveler. And then he can't Psychic Scream. The stupid Thalmos play. Wow. Crazy. We play the Skull card. Hit the Trade button. And then, next turn... We're going to unleash Madness. At last, a worthy disciple. The stupid potion. He's going to take a 5 mana potion, but we're going to make his potion cost like 9 mana. Because we're going to get double Nurbian Unraveler. And then he's going to be sitting there with his potion like, How do I play my potion? What do I do? My potion is too expensive to be played. And he's going to start crying. Tears are going to stream down his face. I can tell because he's playing a priest, and he's using the Madame Lazul skin. I didn't think that they'd ever make a, a portrait worse than Anduin, but they did. With Madame Lazul. It truly is just worse. What the fuck was that play? I don't know what the fuck I just watched, but I don't want to see it again, because I look kind of gross. Migo face. Fiendish circle. Blood bloom. Darkest Tower! Whoa! Look at that. He can't psychic extreme. He can only play the... 4 mana AoE Shadow or Death card. But he's never gonna have that top 11. Because if he does, fuck this game. He literally never ever has that, right? We're the fucking best. Literally cannot be stopped. Diamond 3. Too easy for me. Bring on Diamond 2, baby. Let's go!